Oh man, look at this bridge I have to cross now. Yikes! Hey, Wonder Hussy here. Headed out on an adventure that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And that is hike to Havasu Falls. You know, Havasu Falls, those pictures you see online of that beautiful turquoise blue water cascading down the canyon into those amazing waterfalls. I have a hard time believing a desert creek can really be that color. And there's only one way to find out if it's real or if it's Photoshop. So I'm going down there in person to see for myself. We camped last night up here at the trailhead where you set out in the morning so that we could get up as early as possible and set out first thing. It's already like 6.30, so we're not really that early, but that's early for me. So I have to carry everything that I need for this overnight trip in this massive friggin' backpack. So at home, I tried to be smart and frugal with what I packed and only bring the essentials, but even with just the essentials, my pack weighs something like 31 pounds, so. We'll see if I survive. Oh man, this is a beautiful trail, you guys, look. The way this hike works is, you start out at the parking area, way up on a bluff, and hike down into the canyon where the falls are. After descending a series of really steep switchbacks, you come out into this amazingly beautiful open wash with cowboys running horses and the most dramatic mesas and iconic desert scenery. After crossing the wash, you enter the canyon, where there's a bit more shade and you start to see more trees and greenery. It's a sign that you're approaching some kind of oasis, but I still have a hard time believing that we're really going to see turquoise waterfalls and Hawaii-looking stuff in a desert like this. After about eight miles, you get to a super remote Indian village where you check in for your permit. They're very strict about the number of people they allow down here and you have to have a permit to access the falls. And from there, it's another two miles down to the campground. So 10 miles altogether, which the 31 pounds on your back, ugh. but going downhill's not so bad. Going back up will be another story. If you're lazy, you can hire one of these burrows to carry your pack back up to the top for you. Or if you're really lazy, You can book a ride in one of these helicopters to drag you back up to the top. I don't know, for me personally, I want to pack it out myself because I feel like that's part of the adventure. Oh man, it's been like two and a half hours. I think I'm almost to the village and I'm really hoping that there's not a long wait that there's a cafe there and we wanted to eat a big breakfast once we got down there so we didn't have to pack as much food, save ourselves some weight. Yay! Look, we finally made it close to the village. At least it says it's that way. Supai Village. Darn it though, I forgot to bring any of my own stickers to put up here. Arrgh. I guess we must be getting closer to the river because all these trees and all this green stuff seems <laughs> really unexpected in this desert landscape. Okay, now we're finally coming onto the beginning of the creek so we can check and see what color the water really is down here. Interesting. I just sort of assumed that the pictures that you see on Instagram and on the websites and stuff are all doctored or photoshopped, but I'm standing here right next to this creek, plain as day, using my freaking cell phone, and I'm here to tell you, it really is that color. Almost to the village, just got to cross this bridge over this very swiftly moving creek. It looks so clear. Although I have a friend who works down here as a trained backpacking guide, and he advised me to definitely not drink this creek water, even if I use a filter, because he's supposedly seen raw sewage pouring into it, okay? I guess there's another spring down at the campground below the town. It's a better place and a safer bet to get water. I would think it'd be fine to drink, but my friend said that not only is there, or has he seen raw sewage being dumped into it, but there's also a lot of poop from these guys that washes into it. All right, yay, we finally made it to the village. I think this is the stable where all the pack mules hang out. 
Now, I've read all kinds of horrible things about this village online, that there's flies everywhere, and there's starving dogs running around, and there's abused mules on every corner. I'm curious to see if that was all hype or if that's actually the case. It's about 10 a.m. now, so that means it took us three hours to go downhill eight miles. It's not a very fast pace, but we weren't really rushing. We were kind of poking along, taking our time. So it'll probably take us another hour to get from the village down to the campground. So that'd be four hours altogether going down. And from what I've read online, it generally takes people six hours to go back up. So that is the record I'm aiming to beat. All right, this is the, it's called the Sinyala Store. It says it on the sign there, Sinyala Store. And they have, it says they have breakfast burritos, supai burgers, supai tacos, and fry bread. Yum. And as far as abused animals go, I don't really see any evidence of that. I mean, there's a cowboy down there who's actually watering the horses to cool them off. So if you ask me, he's treating them pretty well. Oh, look, here's one of these pack horses. So you can see for yourself if it looks abused. I mean, I read this stuff online where they're like, oh, you can see the ribs. There's flies all over them. I don't know. Tell us, horse. Are you abused or are you happy with your life? What's that you say? Everything's okay? Yeah, it looks like a pretty peaceful life to me. I mean, I'd rather live down here than I would a lot of places up top. Man, it is beautiful down here. All these little ranches and houses are just so lush. And listen, it's like birds chirping and bees buzzing. And it's almost like a little garden of Eden. It's really nice. Oh, okay, look, it looks like we're coming up on downtown Supai up here. Here's the check-in office. And it looks like there's some more major establishments up ahead. There's a little pano of downtown Supai Village. That's a helicopter landing pad there. So I guess that's where you go if you want to get flown out. And then there's a few buildings down here that we'll go check out. Oh, wow, look at this tree. It's kind of like a signpost and it has some notices for the people who live down here. Oh, it's, look, the doctor only comes down here every once in a while. Isn't that a trip? Like, such a, everything has to be brought in here by helicopter. So even going to the doctor, you gotta schedule out. Oh, look, they have a meeting about Alzheimer's. They got a meeting about domestic violence. Oh, another one about substance use. Eh, I guess it's just like any rural community, they have their issues. Okay, so like any town, there's the post office. There's the grocery store. There is the elementary school. They have their own school down here. Can you imagine what it'd be like to grow up here? It'd be so interesting. Like, it seems like a great place to be a kid. You know, run around, have the, the run of the whole place but your trips up top to town would be... Can you imagine what a big deal it would be just to go to town to like go to the movies or something? Like, what? It's like probably an all-day deal. They gotta take a helicopter up or else hike 10 miles. Whew, that's hardcore. Look, they even have a church here. How cool is that? All right, here's the little cafe. We're gonna go in and check it out, but first we have to take off our backpacks and hang them on this backpack hanger. Yeah. yeah, all right, check out this omelet. Veggie omelet with hash browns and toast for $7.50. That's not a bad price, considering they have to deliver everything down here by helicopter. Whew, wow, that was actually really good food and a lot of it for really cheap. The sodas were $3 each, that was kind of pricey, but the food? All right, now we gotta keep going down to the campground. Holy wow, you guys. This really does look as good as it does on Instagram. Oh, well, look, you can even buy drinks and fry bread and burgers and stuff down here by the campground. Isn't that a trip? I thought you had to tote everything, but apparently you don't. Look at how beautiful this campground is, too. And there's all these little campsites just hidden in the trees along this beautiful rushing creek. But the best spot of all are these guys here at the hammocks. Can you imagine how cozy that would be? I mean, imagine falling asleep to the sound of this rushing water. It'd be so relaxing. Oh man, look at this bridge I have to cross now. Yikes. Okay, unfortunately, by the time we got here, all these nice shady campsites by the creek were taken. And we had to go all the way to the very edge of the campground, the very end, to find a spot. And I really wanted to be by the creek because my friend Alex snores really loud. So loud that we nicknamed him Chainsaw. 
and I'm hoping that the sound of the creek rushing by at night will sort of act like white noise to drown out the sound of his snoring. So even though it's kind of a hot campsite with very little shade, it's pretty cool because it's right by the edge of this amazing waterfall. Check this out. That beautiful, peaceful little creek flowing beside my tent comes rushing down over the side of this cliff and becomes this insane, ginormous waterfall. It's called Mooney Falls, and we're gonna try to hike down to it in a bit. And look at how sketchy the route is. I'm not sure you can see those ladders in the distance down there with people climbing up them there. Well, that's gonna be us. You have to climb those ladders all the way up. I'm not sure you can see the little tiny sign there through this creepy, weird, drippy mud stuff. And then you come up on top there. I don't know, you think it's worth it? I think we should try. Woo! All right, I started hiking down to this beach along that sketchy trail, but it's actually super cool, look. There's all these weird like caves and openings in the side of this rock. Like, I don't know if you remember looking at it from the distance, but it looked all melty and weird. Look at it up close. <laughs> it's really, I guess it's just mud, but it's super calcified and hardened over the years. It's really neat. But we can't go in all the caves. We don't have time. We gotta go down this trail all the way down. It just kind of zigzags down the side of this cliff face. Really not that hard of a trail. As long as you watch where you're putting your feet. I mean, as is my custom, I'm doing it in my flip-flops because I'm so tired of wearing hiking boots I couldn't stand the thought of putting them on for this. But my flip-flop blew out. The thong came loose out of the sole. So I had to kind of sew it together with an old hair tie. So I hope it lasts on this treacherous hike. <laughs> okay, now we have to climb down this creepy tunnel. It's kind of like stairs. Oh my god, this tunnel is a trip. Yikes, oh my god, I can't believe I came down that whole friggin' tunnel. Okay, we finally made it down that tunnel, but now we gotta go down this sketchy ladder, and it's supposed to be very slippery. It's a good thing they have these chains bolted onto the wall like at Angel's Landing or Half Dome. Makes it a little bit less sketchy. And it's also a good thing that there's this amazing reward waiting for us at the end, because that makes all of this worthwhile. Oh my god, you guys. I can't believe I just climbed down to that sketchy ladder. And I still have to go all the way back up. But I mean, I guess it was worth it. We made it. Ah! I mean, look how friggin' beautiful this is. It's real windy down here and probably really loud, but it's pretty cool. And way up at the top of that is where our campsite is. Man, it is so unbelievably beautiful down here, everywhere you look, except for one thing kind of freaks me out, and that's that thing. I think that's a cage to carry a body or a paralyzed person back up to the top if they fall down and hurt themselves. Yay! I kind of just want to get this over with. Woo! I cannot believe I made it back up those sketchy ladders and now I am tired, filthy, and there's only one thing to do and that is go for a dip to clean off in this beautiful little grotto right by my campsite. All right, so I changed out of my bikini into some dry, warmer clothes because it gets a little bit chilly here at night. It's not really chilly, it's probably still in the low 70s. But now I'm gonna go fill my water bladder and get some more water because I'm out. And there happens to be a spring in here. It supposedly doesn't need to be filtered to drink it. But to get there, I gotta cross this sketchy bridge. All right, here's the fern spring where you can supposedly just drink the water right out of the rock. Yeah. See? <laughs> Seems pretty clean. Mmm, 
yum, tastes delicious. Okay, we spent a really beautiful, peaceful night camping by that creek, and it was a primo place to camp because the white noise from the river canceled out my friend's snoring, and we all slept great for like 11 hours. I feel like a new person. So now we're hiking out, which is no joke because it's 10 miles altogether, and it's uphill the entire way, plus it's going to be hot. So what we decided to do is leave camp and come up to the Havasu Falls which is, I guess, the most famous waterfall down here. But we're just gonna spend a couple hours chilling out here because it's a little bit up canyon from the campground. And then from here, we're gonna go to a second set of falls and kind of chill out there. And from there, we'll go up to the village and get a ice cream or something before we start that final assault out of the canyon. Because that's not gonna be fun. We're gonna try to wait until later in the day when it gets cooler. So let's go check out Havasu Falls. Wow, we look at it. It's like a little resort lagoon down here. Everyone's just kind of laying out sunning. Wow, this will be the perfect place to relax for a couple hours before we hike out. Okay, it's really loud here because of the water, but check this out. It's so beautifully crystal clear. I mean, look at this water. I mean, this looks like a fake lagoon at a resort hotel, right? Like there should be a pina colada bar somewhere. And then there's this calcified travertine, I guess, or travertine buildups you can kind of walk along. That's what this is. Really nice. I'm just gonna sit here and cool off for a bit before we start our hike out. Oh man, we hiked up from Havasu Fall, the big beautiful waterfall. Making our way slowly back up to the top, and about maybe a half a mile past that, we came to the second set of falls. And these are beautiful. I mean, this whole creek is nothing but a series of waterfalls as it goes down, 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 down the canyon, where it finally falls over, Havasu Falls, and then Mooney Falls, and then into the Colorado River. Actually, there's another set of falls called Beaver Falls that were below Mooney Falls. And we wanted to hike to those two, but we didn't realize until we had already climbed back up that sketchy ladder from Mooney Falls that, hello, we would have had to just keep hiking down along the creek to get to Beaver Falls. Well, we were already back up top by the time we realized that, and we didn't want to climb down that ladder again. So we decided to save Beaver Falls for another trip. But anyways, I'm gonna get in the water and cool off one last time because this is my last chance for a dip before we hit the village and then head up out of the canyon. All right, so we hiked out of that last spring. We came up here to the village to fill our water bottles one more time. The water bladders, there's a couple taps here in town where you can fill with drinking water. And then we were gonna grab a bite before we headed back up on the trail, but the cafe was closed by the time we got here, so we had to go to this little convenience store that they have and get some frozen burritos and we're microwaving them right now. We're gonna eat that, take a short rest, and then we're gonna hit it. All right, I ate my frozen microwaved bean and cheese burrito, which actually wasn't that bad. And we sat down at these little picnic tables here, had our snack, put on our shoes, and now we're just one more thing to do before we head out, and that's go get ice cream for the road, because hopefully that'll give us the energy we need for the next eight miles. Um, all right, got my ice cream, got my pack on. It's 6 p.m. and we're starting to head up. Let's see how it goes. Whew. All right, I've been hiking for about an hour and a half, got about halfway up, which is way faster than I thought I was gonna go. It's really nice. It's like 7.30, 7 p.m. <laughs> Look at that. So it's not hot anymore. It's kind of cool and shaded. And there's no one on the trail. Totally different from the way down here. I mean, part of that probably was we hiked down on the sun or the Monday of Memorial Day weekend. So there were a ton of people on the trail. There is no one on the trail now. <laughs> really nice. Oh, man. Finally got to the switchbacks hiking up. It's already pretty much pitch black out here so I got my headlamp on but we're hiking along in the dark and saw this on the trail a scorpion yikes 
Scary, good thing I'm wearing my headlamp so I didn't accidentally step on it. Uh oh, now look what's on the trail. Yikes, it's a snake. But there's no rattle on the end, so I guess it's just a little baby gopher snake or something. Yikes, I gotta get up the rest of this trail. Thank goodness we're almost at the top. Oh my God, you see that red light? That means we made it. That's the red flashing light at the trailhead by the bathrooms. Oh my God. And it's only 9.20. Okay, that means it only took three hours and 20 minutes to get up, which is faster than it took us to get down. How about that? I'm sweaty and I'm exhausted, but I feel a great sense of accomplishment. And I wanted to drive back to Vegas tonight because I'd much rather sleep in my own bed because let me tell you, that sleeping in that trailhead parking lot is not fun. It's loud, there's people coming and going all friggin' night. But my friend Alec that's with us rode here on a motorcycle and he said he's too tired to ride back to Vegas on a motorcycle tonight. So we're gonna compromise and try to find a wider pullout or something on the road where we can camp. That has, you know, is a little quieter because I am tired and I want a good night's sleep or as close to it as I can get. <coughs> Ooh, all right, well, we camped at the side of the trailhead again last night and guess what we woke up to? A little baby horse came into our camp and it's so friendly. It's a little baby. Look at this thing. You're so little. I love you. So sweet. Let's back up a little bit so you can see how small this horse is compared to me. It's a little tiny baby. Oh my god. <laughs> ah! Oh, you want more? Okay. See, this is a, it's like a pet horse, a people horse. The horse wants to be loved. I'm gonna have to take this horse home with me. I mean, I woke up this morning to the sound of hoofbeats. And I looked out my tent and there was a whole herd of horses nosing around. Obviously they're not wild because they're so friendly, but the rest of the herd wandered off and left the little baby here with us. <laughs> so I guess it was a good thing we ended up having to stay the night at the trailhead again after all. I mean, this baby horse hung out with us for an hour and we took about a bazillion photos with it and we were starting to get kind of worried like, is the mama horse ever gonna come back for it? Or am I gonna have to drag this poor little baby horse back to Vegas with me and keep it as a pet? But after an hour, the rest of the herd came back and the little baby ran right over to the mama and started drinking milk and everything was okay. Talk about an amazing end to our Havasu adventure. Whew, now that I made it home sweet home, it's time for a recap about my Havasu Falls adventure. First of all, did I use all that gear I toted down there? All 31 pounds of it. Yes, I did, almost all of it. I brought a little bit too much trail mix. I brought a GoPro I didn't use. And I brought an external battery pack for my phone that I didn't end up using because I forgot to bring the cable to connect my phone to it. But other than that, I used pretty much everything I brought. So 30 pounds, it sounds like a lot, but that's probably what you're gonna need. And it wasn't really that bad. Secondly, what I wore, shorts, a tank top, and hiking boots worked out perfectly, both on the way down and the way up. It's warm enough to where you don't need a long sleeve shirt. There's not a lot of prickly bushes on the trail, so you don't need long pants. Just make sure you wear plenty of sunscreen because it was hot. And thirdly, hiking up at night turned out to be a really good idea. Not only was it much cooler, there was a full moon the night we hiked out, plus we had headlamps, so it was really easy to see the trail, even when there were scorpions and snakes on it, and there was no traffic. There weren't hardly any other hikers, and there were no pack animals that you had to stand aside for. And speaking of those pack animals, I looked into it when I got back into cell service, and most of those complaints of animal abuse are from years ago. Apparently within the last year, the tribe has really cracked down on treatment of animals down there. And like I showed you, all the horses that I saw down there seemed pretty happy and well cared for. I mean, look at the baby horse that we played with this morning. That little baby horse and then the whole herd that it was with seemed pretty happy and well fed. So you don't need to feel bad about hiking down to Havasu. In fact, I really recommend it. It's such an amazingly beautiful place. I know not everybody can hike, but you can take those helicopters. It's only $85 each way. And there's a hotel at the bottom. So if you don't want to camp, you could still do it. You'd still have to hike about a mile, two miles to get to the waterfalls. But if there's any way at all you can do it, I definitely recommend it. It was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And a reminder of just how wonderful this world is. Not just the world around Vegas, all of it. <laughs>